Manhattan Beach Police Department, crime report 006799, DR number 8501713, reporting officer, Detective J. Hogue. Date of report 81283, person filing complaint, Judy Ann Johnson, misses. Report follows. Mrs. Johnson came to the police station approximately 10.30 a.m. with her son Malcolm, aged two and a half years, and filed a complaint charging child sexual abuse. Reporting officer conducted an interview with the child and with his mother. Mrs. Johnson alleges that her son has been molested while attending preschool in Manhattan Beach. Complainant reported that her son named Raymond Charles Bucky. Subject walking from parking lot on campus. Past a group of 12 school children, six to eight years of age. Subject stopped and watched children playing. Subject was alone and talked to nobody. The eyewitness news feed. From the desert to the sea to all of Southern California, a good evening. Here's the latest at six in a case which has been described as one of the most bizarre and shocking ever to involve young children. Reporter Wayne Satz is now able to bring you this extraordinary exclusive story. Wayne. Tonight's story comes out of the mouths of over 60 children, some of them as young as two years of age. They have allegedly been keeping a grotesque secret. The secret is they were being sexually molested and made to appear in pornographic films. The children were all attending this Yeah, priest. hi, it's Kelly. Little Are you watching this? I'm watching Manhattan. it. Call me when it's over. What makes their statements even more extraordinary and shocking is that the owner of this preschool is 76-year-old Virginia McMartin, Manhattan Beach's most honored citizen. In fact, this home video was Baby. shot at the Chamber of hey. Commerce, mm -hmm. giving Virginia McMartin the mm -hmm. highest Watch award this. her community could give. Watch this. The Rose and Scroll. Here, here, here. Look at this. Look. Watch. To me, there isn't anything that can equal the smile and love of a small child. Forgive me. I go on and on when I get started on my favorite subject, children. But last year, the mother of one of the students, Judy Johnson, noticed her two-and-a-half-year-old son was having a redness on his bottom and having nightmares. She accused Virginia McMartin's 25-year-old grandson, Raymond Bucky, seen here in this home movie at the school's Halloween parade. Ray Bucky? The Manhattan Beach police sent mm -hmm. letters to parents whose children had attended the McMartin preschool, asking them to question their children about possible cases of sodomy. Oral copulation. This is the most sick thing. Yeah, and guess who the lawyer wants to take this case off his hands? In which children Danny, no. While Not these people. The children all replied that nothing had happened. That was until the district attorney took the children to this nationally recognized therapist on child abuse, Key McFarland of CII, the Children's Institute International. She drew forth horrifying stories of molestation from literally hundreds of children based on play therapy sessions which she videotaped. I don't think the depth of terror that can be put into a child should be underestimated. I've been working in this field for 13 years and I haven't seen a situation that compares to this. It's simply horrifying. They said the teachers mutilated animals at their school. Oh God, the poor telling babies. Telling the children that their parents would receive similar treatment. Is it any wonder that they kept silent? How do you get Danny, this, this thing is going to be plastered all over everywhere by tomorrow morning. I hope so. What a case. In that way, they don't feel the parents will be killed because it's the puppets that are saying it, not them. Are the, are the children able to... We've been on this case for happened. weeks, and it still gives me the creeps. Yes. Yeah, have you thought about those parents? The guilt, the betrayal they must be feeling? God, they trusted their children to these people. A case like this makes you glad you're a prosecutor. In the meantime, to the outrage of many parents, Ray Bucky remains a free man. The grand jury... Okay, Kelly, I'll take it. The case is mine. You are crazy to take this on, and you are sweaty. Hey, come on, Grace. Their lawyer's getting rocks thrown through his window, so he chickens out. Channel 7's got him buried already. The odds against him are 50 to 1 the other way. You really want to see him lynched? Do you understand what these people did? 
did to children. Hey, a client's a client. Open the door, please. Where's your son, man? got here? Naked dolls, robe, women's underwear. Wow. Take a look at that. It's in there, Lord. Be my baby. Yeah. Black cape? Yeah. I don't know. Strange. Kind of interesting. They're naked. They're all naked here. Uh, Hello, Mr. Davis. Down. Manhattan Beach Police. Your client's just been arrested. Thanks. Sorry. Bye. <laughs> Congratulations, I hear they had to move you into the celebrity ring with Sean Penn, the Ninja Brothers, and the Night Stalker. I'm Danny Davis, your new attorney. Kelly couldn't stand the heat, so he got out of the kitchen. Thank you, Sam, thank you. Come on, chop, chop. For any client privilege, shut the door. I don't worry, kid, I'm the best there is. I haven't left anybody in jail yet. Come on, guys, give me a break, will ya? Come on. Jesus, everybody's watching your cage, so here's the deal. You don't talk to anybody, not anybody. You don't say you did it, you don't say you didn't do it. You just don't talk. What? Why am I here? I didn't do anything. Congratulations again. You'll be the first innocent client I ever had. No one in my family has ever been arrested. This will kill them. Well. Are you kidding with those glasses? You look like a child molester. Get rid of them or it's going to be a short trial. This is a mind-boggling case. Not only has Ray Bucky been taken into custody, but now they're arresting his mother, 57-year-old Miss Peggy, as she is called by children. Step back, please. They're arresting Peggy Ann Bucky, who is Virginia McMartin's granddaughter and Ray Bucky's sister at Kennedy High School in Newport Beach. Put your hands Beach. behind your back, ma'am. You don't have to do it in front of the kids. They also arrested 62-year-old teacher Betty Rader as she was returning with her granddaughter from a stroll. 
Mary Ann Jackson, 60. I understand it. Mother of four and grandmother of five. Babette Spitley, mother of two who had once worked helping abused children. And, amazingly so enough, outrageous. the grand jury also indicted the 76-year-old owner of the McMartin School, Virginia oh. McMartin. I said stop this right now! Oh. Hello, my name is Danny Davis. I'll be representing you for the bail hearing. Why are we here? How can the police do this? You're here because you were indicted by a grand jury and the police were well within their rights. The what about our rights? The parents were afraid something else might happen to what their children. What do the TV people think they're doing? That reporter stuck his camera right in my face. Wayne Satz, he's the Geraldo of local news, but he's usually not wrong. What's the matter with everybody? Don't they know children make up stories? A lot of new research indicates that they don't make up stories about child abuse. Oh, hogwash. Well, Los Angeles believes it, and the DA believes that this case is going to win him re-election. Do you look at us? Do we look like child molesters? Does Ted Bundy look like a serial killer? I'll need power of attorney over your property for your bail hearing. Your bail and your granddaughter's is set at $50,000 a piece. You want my house and uh, my school? Your daughter's set at $350,000. Why well, should I give you something I worked my whole life grandson, for? grandson, Ray Bucky, at $1 million. She drove a school bus for years to be able to get the money to buy this school. In our neighborhood, she's considered a saint. In her neighborhood, Joan of Arc was considered a saint, and they burned her at the stake. Just sign here. Ah, on the X, please. If you're going to be our lawyer, you can start by getting my grandmother's wheelchair back. And where did they put my daughter? I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. If you want to stay here forever, then don't sign it. If you'd like to get out on bail in a few days, then please just sign at the X, okay? No physical contact. Thank you. I'll see what I can do about your wheelchair. Bye. Huh. See a new fall? Number one concern? Child abuse to cause this crime? I know. Are you surprised? Boy, you are fast. I've been chasing you all over. Can we work out lower bail in, uh, in McMartin? Because, you know, hey, you know my clients aren't a danger to the community, so what's the problem? I mean, that's the only justification for that kind of bail. Am I right? Come on, Stephen. These people never had so much as a parking ticket, for Christ's sake. These people are monsters, Mr. Davis. Do you actually believe children would make something like this up? I knew it would be someone like you who would take this case. What happened? Did you run out of drug dealers? She couldn't. Listen, I want you to know something. I care passionately about this case. Do your bottom feeding somewhere else. Don't tell me that you didn't take this case for the exact same reason I did. Because it's a great case. The media are going to be all over it. They're going to be on this thing like... the obvious? You are an opportunist of the worst kind. You're using these little children to aggrandize yourself. They deserve better than that. I intend to see that they get it. One other thing. Whatever happened to the presumption of innocence? Yucky scum. KSDO Mobile One to KBC base. KBC this is Mobile One in position. This is KBC Signal sending tone at plus 10 dB on the one one three zero WB. KNX ten seventy is one six zero. We are sending a signal. Please confirm you have a thousand cycles. Please confirm you have audio tone. This is KBC News Van Twelve. We are transmitting color bars in tone. Do you have audio and video? Shock and disbelief is the reaction in Manhattan Beach today as the horrified parents of former pupils at the Lake Martin that he's been with Raymond Bucky also brandished a gun Deputy to terrorize Deputy District Attorney Leo Rubin says she'll be charging 400 new acts. It's a parent's nightmare. The person entrusted to guard and teach their child suspected of the scale of the possibility that children were used for FBI pornography. FBI source has said that there are huge Remember how vulnerable they were feeling during the time they were abused? 
They need to feel they have power over their own destiny. Here and cut. The children's stories were told to key to It's even better than before. Yeah, and all this in sweep sweep, too. Here they come. And here comes Virginia McMartin, who was granted bail two weeks ago, along with her granddaughter. A poll conducted by District Attorney Philip Ogian's re-election committee identifies child abuse as the number one voter concern in the upcoming we're elections. about such acts as rape, sodomy, oral copulation, and fondling. Hi, Denise. How the kids? Shame on you, Mr. Davis. Speech for the chair up there. Where? Over there. Hi, I'm here. Excuse me. Thank you. Could you? Uh, we'll be out of here in just about an hour, okay? okay. So. Just get my brother released too, not just us women. On a million dollars bail, one step at a time here. Just sit down. You all right? five or ten minutes here. I have a few things that I have to present, just a formality, and then we'll have you out of here and you'll be on your way home, okay? Perfect typecasting. They could be book involved guards. Look at the old woman. All rise. Superior Court of the State of California is now in session. Judge Ronald M. George presiding. Miss Rubin. Your Honor, the people moved to deny bail for the defendants. What did she say? We've already set bail. There have been developments since. Developments. What developments? These children and their parents were threatened by the defendants that if they appeared in court as witnesses, they would be killed. These threats make them a serious danger to the public safety. Where is, uh, where is the proof of this, Your Honor? I have it in statements by the parents and the children. Well, I want to talk to those children and verify these things. You'll get your turn. Continue, Miss Rubin. Your Honor, the McMartin Preschool was in the business of orchestrating clear and unequivocal child abuse. Thank you. Yes, Your Honor. I would like to, uh, I'd like to begin with Peggy Ann Bucky, the uh, sister of, of Ray, uh, the daughter of Peggy Bucky and the granddaughter of Virginia McMartin. This uh, young lady was awarded the Higgins Scholarship for Outstanding student, of, uh, student Teacher of the Year, even to suggest that she be Good old Danny, bail. next to when call her a virgin. routinely granted to felons and murderers. Do you think allegations of abuse against hundreds of children is any less a danger than, say, the murder of one person? But there is nothing more than allegations, Your Honor. I have read the transcripts of the grand jury proceedings, and I believe they demonstrate the broad scope of this conspiracy. Denying bail to Miss Bucky, Your Honor, would be more responsive to the media rather than any precedent. I think that's entirely out of line, Mr. Davis. If there is any case where there is to be no bail in a non-capital case, this is that case. Yes, Your Honor, but I... In the interest of public safety, I deny bail to Raymond Bucky. Oh. I also deny bail to Babette Spittler, Betty Rader, Peggy Ann Bucky, and Peggy Bucky. Your Honor, 
Your Honor, I beseech you, I beseech you to reconsider. I, I don't know what happened. I, what about my children? What's going on with my children? I promise you, I promise you I will take care of this. Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis. What are you running away for? What do you want? I want you to tell my viewers right here and now that you believe your clients are innocent. I refer you to their plea. I believe it's not guilty. <laughs> Cut. Congratulations, Davis. You just chickened out in front of five million people. You are such an asshole. Thank you. Thank you. I have with me a man who spent two days in the same jail cell as the key figure in the most amazing child molestation case in Ooh, history. Ooh, nice tattoos. What is he, a Hells Angel? George Freeman. Yeah. What did Ray Bucky tell you? Bucky told me in jail that he'd penetrate the kids with KY jelly so it wouldn't tear them up. Where does Wayne Satz find Can these people? Tell you anything about well, he gets the whole thing. At one point in the prosecution. Martin school children how to perform oral copulation on a man. In the office sewer pipe. I told him I was there for the same thing he was. But this case is bad. Can't you get out of it? Little kids. I got five kids and grandchildren of my own. I did not take the classes and by three years. I stood in front of a classroom and, and taught kids how to perform sex acts. You're gonna have to talk to me. You're gonna have to tell me everything. You saw my sister. Who could say that about Ray, her? Ray, you're gonna have to talk to me. You're gonna have to tell me everything because I'm not gonna stand in front of that court with my dick in my hand waiting for them to throw things at you. Now I, talk to me. I said, God and I mean. It that there will be no surprises, there's nothing. You know this is not a, a, a frat initiation at San Diego State. There are gonna be little children on that stand saying that they were hurt. You have got to be ready for that. Who could and be ready for that? Hurt by you and your sister. What do you want me to do? I can't make things all right, up. All right, all right, all right. Why would a guy wanna work in a preschool with kids? I like being with kids. Never answer that question like that again. Now, Mr. Bucky, please tell the court, why would a grown man want to work with preschool children? It was my grandmother's school. Wrong, wrong. Come on, Ray, I come on. I be near the beach. No, come on, come on, come on. Better, better, come on. I dropped out of college, and I needed a job. Ah, better, better. It sucks, but it's better. You know that some of the uh, parents said that you didn't wear underwear at the preschool. You wore that? No, I didn't wear underwear underneath my shorts. So you got your dick hanging out in front of these No, they're, they're surfer shorts. Oh, they're your little surfer dick was hanging out. That makes it It's better. a beach community. I mean, is, is that a crime now? No, too? but it's enough to convict you. That's all. You could do about 500 years in jail. Tell me about your relationships with women, okay? How many women have you been to bed with, Ray? Just round numbers, like 20, 30, 50, whatever. It's one. Do you mind? One, one what? One woman. How old are you? What, you're, what, 25 years old? You've been to bed with one woman? Only one. Is that another crime? When you're accused of child molesting, everything is a crime. <sighs> you're a fruit, right? Come on, you like to bite the pillow, right? Come no. On. Hey, we all thought about it at summer camp. Come on. You I'm not. With me. Okay. Got a little gift for you here, Ray. My name is Ray Bucky. I don't talk, I don't listen. Ray, you gotta stop grinding your teeth. Very unattractive in front of a jury. You just have to take one look at Bucky and you know he's guilty. Why aren't we taking up this stuff faster from the investigators on this? We really, really have to move quickly on this. I know, I'm hoping for something from the names on Virginia's diaries. Good, there should be a lot of material in 10 years of diaries. Where are we on the tapes? Uh, we're playing catch up. Uh, more is coming all the time. Thousands of hours of tapes. <sighs> He's working overtime. Right off the when was the last time any of us had any food? What do you say, Greek, Chinese? Yeah, good idea. What about pornographic pictures, huh? They've got to be out there somewhere. Get a list of all the photo labs. By the way... Oh, and get the FBI to check out dealers in Scandinavia, too. By the way, this note... Judy Johnson, the original Judy Johnson, accuser? Johnson, listen, Glenn, we've got hundreds of kids making accusations. Now they've all got to be checked out, and it's all got to be done quickly. Thank pet you. stores. Check into pet stores. 
They're killing all these animals. There's got to be a supplier. We should probably check this Johnson note out, you know, just to see if this woman is okay. In the note, she seems kind of, uh, well, fragile would be polite. Yeah, after all she's been through, you're surprised. I wonder if the defense got this note. Why wouldn't they? Oh, and check out all the animal labs, too. Good. At least in the home, you know your child's safe. Hi there. You must be Malcolm. This is Johnson. I'm Glenn Stevens from the DA's office. I'll be helping you with your testimony. I would like to speak to your son as well. He's been through enough. Malcolm, go inside. Well, you know, I'll have to speak to him sooner or later. I mean, after all, it was your charges that started this whole case. Your son is our most important witness, Mrs. Johnson. Several more preschools are being investigated for possible links Parents with the dropping their children off at the Hickory Tree Preschool in the honor of the little angel. Authorities in Manhattan Beach have raided the Manhattan Ranch They're also asking that any parent who has had a child in the The owner of the, 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 the Greenup School in Northridge has been charged with 16 felony counts of child molestation. The Peninsula Montessori number two. Police were called in after allegations. Sheriff Block said he believed over 1,200 children may have been molested and swapped with children from other schools. I'm going to ask you this is about the thousandth time for the grand jury transcript transcript and the police report. I mean, if you won't pursue this, we'll conduct our own investigation. Not while I'm chief of police, you won't. Every minute, somebody's reporting another child molester. Yeah, that's a good reason for that. You see what happened to Green up today? Right and left yes, did you there. hear what happened to I'm yes, really yes. not sure how much evidence there is. Oh, there's plenty of evidence. You ever watch the news? Let's be careful here, or some innocent people will be hurt. Peggy, I want you to try to calm down. You if don't you can, okay? No you one's gonna kill you. Don't know what it's like here. You don't think anything like this can ever happen to you. I have to go to the infirmary for my medicine, and they have my handcuffs behind my back, and they say words to me. They say they want to hurt me. I don't know why they put you in general population, all right? We are going to get you moved, I promise. You seem like a nice man. Who are you? Dean Gitz is my name, remember? Judge George called and asked if I wanted to represent you. How old are you? You look like a kid. 39. You're much too thin. Fire crews were called again last night to the site of the former McMartin Preschool in Manhattan Beach. In what is believed to be an arson attempt, the vacant school buildings were set ablaze between 3 and 4 this morning. The fire was brought under control and there were no casualties. Authorities suspect there may be a link with the ongoing child molestation. How's your step? Second time in two months. Should have let it burn. mess. Watch out for the puddle. The windows, look how big they are. You can see right in. <laughs> We're in the busiest street in town, you can see right in. Anybody could. Do they have curtains? I don't see any. Think I did it? What do you think? 
Well, when I read Peggy the charges against her, she asked me what a dildo was. The others are the same. Mothers, grandmothers, Christian scientists. Never as much as a parking ticket. And yet you have these kids saying that they were raped, sodomized, made to do pornography. I don't know. It's kind of hard to imagine it happening here, isn't it? I've seen so much of my time, nothing shocks me. I don't see any closets. Aren't some of the kids saying that Ray would hide them in a closet when their parents came? Isn't that supposed to be in the tapes? Did you get anywhere with those tapes? The other side sees the tapes. Our side flies blind. Doing the best I can. Fucking Where are the baby rapers! <laughs> Let me show you the interview room. Okay. Hi, guys. Hi. Still busy, I see. It's unbelievable, isn't it? The parents and the kids spread the word around. There's more coming every day. Come in. How many have you taped so far? Over 300. And how long is each tape? Anywhere from an hour and a half to two. What? We go into preliminary next month. How am I going to look at all of these? We've indexed every charge on our VCR counter. Sandy. Fantastic. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Chuck Ross, 2512. The child says, Ray and Peggy touched my penis. Marianne, 3271. Marianne made me kiss her boobs, 3512. Chuck says he copulated Betty. Do you have anything on Virginia? Heather. Heather. Heather Ross. Here it is. 2665. Virginia would turn her wheelchair around and clap while the naked games were going on. This is very helpful. Sometimes takes a while, but the truth always comes out in the end. I can see you staring out the window, holding pets like this. I can feel you creeping on the kites and barn. Watching Kevin fall from the door, slam. Time to get up, let's go. Come on, get up. What's Move going it. on? Get your things together, we're moving you. Where are we coming? Chop, 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 chop. Over here, come on, that's right, the bag. Pick up the bag, that's right, the items in the bag, very good. What's happening? Gee, come on over, help her out here. We're transferring Where are we going? You. We're transferring you, let's go. Come on, move it. Will you please tell me where you're taking me? Right here, 4203. Prisoner transfer time, 317 a.m. I don't want to have to share a cell with anyone. In. Oh. 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 Mom! Mom! Is, is that, is that you? Peggy? It's you? Oh, thank God! Thank God it's you! Oh. Oh, it's, so, it's so awful here. There's this woman in the next cell, and she's... She screams all night long. She screams. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. I finally have someone to talk to you. Have you, have you seen Ray? Is he all right? How is my baby? They won't tell me anything. To let him go. Oh, I'm so afraid. I'm so worried about him. I'm so worried about all of this. For God's sake, shut happened. your mother up unless you want them to hear every word. What are you talking about? What? Well, they're probably bugging you. You think they put you in the same cell out of the goodness of their hearts? Do they strike you as benevolent people? God. And they made us take our clothes off and lay on our tummies on the floor. 
and then they'd tie us up. And I was scared. And he shouted at us and told us to be quiet. She poked me with her fingers, and it hurt. Where did it hurt you? It hurt in my bottom. And some other men were there as well. What did they do? They watched and took photos. And then they would take us to the car wash, and we'd have to take off our clothes in the car. And they would be with us in the car, and um, he would touch us. These kids are so brave to come forward. The poor little things actually feel guilty themselves for the violations they've suffered. They need all our love and support to help them get through this terrible trauma they've had to endure at the hands of the people they trusted. Key McFarlane also went on to say that the children's stories have been remarkably consistent since the very first allegations were made nearly 10 months ago. What is it? What is so important? You know we have a preliminary in two weeks. Hey, Malcolm. Where's Jude? I thought it best that you talked to Malcolm alone. Tell him, Malcolm. He hurt me. Who hurt you, Malcolm? He poked me. Who poked you? Daddy poked me with a stick in my bottom. What's a stick, Malcolm? This is a stick. Where did it happen? In the bath. Daddy took a bath with me. Did Mommy tell you to say bad things about Daddy? Mm -mm. No. Why don't you uh, go into your mom, hmm? Thanks, buddy. Do you really believe this is what happened? What choice do I have? Well, could there be some other explanation? Come on, Jane, is there? Well, he filed for divorce. Well, there it is. Judy doesn't work. She doesn't have anything. This is her way of getting even, maybe even getting a little money. We have to file charges against the father. Jane, if we do that, the defense will kill us with it. This was the first charge against Ray Buggy. Malcolm was with his father the night before Judy reported he was molested. They'll say that's how this whole thing started. Well, what do you want to do then? Let the father have visitation again? Of course not. Just uh, tell Judy not to let Father see Malcolm until we can check this out. All right? You have no idea what we went through to get these tapes. We have to watch all of them here. They won't let me take them to my office. So I need you guys to help me out. I want you to take notes on each child, write down every single thing you can remember about him or her. First kid we're seeing is uh, Jonathan Lawson. Okay. We can skip him. I came to the school after, after he was gone. Well, I think this tape is gonna show that he remembers you. So let's um, refresh your recollection, as they say in the courtroom. I've got some really crazy looking dolls to show you. These are as nutty as anything. <laughs> wow, that's weird. These kind of look like cupcakes, don't they? <laughs> she has a belly button. She has hair on her vagina. <laughs> and this one. This one has a penis. <laughs> Now I'd like you to look at a picture. You know him, don't you? Remember him? Um, yeah, I think. I think. Now, was he a teacher you. when you were in school back then? Um, no, I, I, I don't think I remember him. Look at his face. 
No. Was he around? Maybe back then. No, I wasn't. Um, who is she to do this? I, I didn't see him much. Once or twice. The older kids like you have to help the little kids because they're not as smart as you. And we found out some crummy stuff happened to these little kids. Do you think you might be able to help us out? It didn't happen to me. No, it didn't happen to you? Somehow I can't remember. I'm not sure about it. Well, sometimes some of this stuff is really hard to talk about. And that's why we use puppets. Hi, Snake. Some of the kids told us they played yucky games and the teachers would touch them in some yucky places. Did something like that happen to Jonathan? To me, it didn't. Didn't happen to Jonathan? No, it didn't happen to me. No, it didn't happen to me. Didn't happen to me. Do you guys remember the tickle game? Tickle game? Come on, your memory can't be that bad. All your best friends say you played it. What's the matter, Snake? Isn't your memory as good as theirs? Um, I remember the tickle game. See? What a good memory. I thought I had a bad one. It might be better than you thought. Maybe you could show us how the tickle game was played. We crawl around and they try to get us. They go slow and tickle us. Was it a naked game sometimes? They go like this and pull up my t-shirt and tickle my belly. That's all that happened. That's all that happened? Yes. This kid could end up saving your life. OK, you guys remember the naked movie star game? Naked movie star game? It was sort of a fashion show, I think. Well, I'll walk across the room, turn around and around. What did the grown-ups do? I think, I'm not sure, taking pictures? Boy, you're really something. Who was taking pictures? Really trying to test your brain here. It was Ray, I know that. Oh, what? <laughs> it was Ray, I know that. <laughs> it was Ray, I know that. Amazing! 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 It was scary. He told us to hide in a tunnel under the school. When our moms and dads came, they wouldn't see us. And we were all naked, and we had to do this dance. And Ray, he killed the horse. He hit it, and it died. What did he hit it with? A baseball bat. He hit it, and the horse fell down. Who else was there? The goat man. And then they took us to the airport, and we flew on a plane. The airport? Didn't you tell me it was uh, the car wash? Uh, it was the airport, but the plane had no windows. You're free. You're out on bail. Your father's waiting to pick you up in the parking lot. Right now? Right now. Let's go. What about the others? Are they out too? Not Ray, but we expected that. And your mother's lawyer waived her right to a speedy trial. Oh, my God. That's all right. Come on. I'm going to be on my own here again. It'll be okay, Mom. You'll be out soon. Leave this comb. Maybe you need it. be okay. Be strong. I love you. I don't think I can make it here alone. What? 
I don't think I can make it here on my own. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll stay with you. I'll stay. I won't let him put up bail for me. And I'll just... I can do that. I can stay. Okay. No. You go on. Hurry up before they change their mind. Go on. Go on. Go on. I, I thought I heard you say thank you for getting you out. Really I mistaken. I can't. I can't. I feel too guilty. Guilty about what? About leaving everybody behind. Just weeks after new DA Ira Reiner's taking over the reins Incredibly, from Robert Philippe, it's now 11 months since we started bringing you these exclusive reports. We're here today from the first child witness, a seven-year-old boy named simply John Doe. Testimony Southern. is expected to contain explicit allegations highly damaging to the defense, and the mood here in the courthouse is one of grim anticipation. There is no doubt that feelings about the case run very high. There's indeed. some enlightenment here they come. Very clearly, and the whole area of child abuse. I just hope that it doesn't lead to hysteria and. Page. Please, the lights are hurting her eyes. She's got cataracts. Come on, what are you doing? Come on, she has cataracts. I didn't you hear what's, she heard... What's going on? Hey, move that. What are you doing, you son of a bitch? Someone told you to defend the devil! Is that what you need? As you can see, we've put the press in another room while children testify. They will have to watch us on closed circuit TV. Hi, Sean. Who touched you, Sean? Ray and Miss Piggy. Did you ever play any other naked games? Alligator game. Could you tell us the names of the people who played the alligator game? I don't remember. Oh, well... What other games did you play, Sean? Naked Movie Star. That's right. Did somebody take pictures of you during that game? Yeah, I don't remember. Now, did, didn't you tell me that uh, Miss Virginia took the pictures during Naked Movie Star game? Your Honor, leading the witness, objection. Objection overruled. Sean, did Miss Virginia take the pictures while you played the Naked Movie Star game? 
Yes. Did Ray ever touch you with anything beside his hand? His penis. Where did Ray put his penis? In my penis. Did he think you shot him? Good morning, Sean. Good morning. Morning, Snoopy. <laughs> I understand your dad calls you Haystack. Why is that? I don't know. You think it's because of that little hair that sticks out there, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Sean, um, your mommy took you to a place called CII, and there you met a lady named Key, and she showed you some pretty strange dolls. Yes. And the lady, Key, wanted to talk to you about penises, didn't she? Yes. You think that was kind of funny? This lady had just met, wanted to tell you things like that? Sort of. Kind of weird. She told you she thought that Ray had touched you on the penis, didn't she? Yes. And you said no, didn't you? Yes. And she just kept asking that same old question, didn't she? Yeah. And eventually you said, well, yeah, Ray touched me on the penis. Objection, leaving. Sustained. When you first talked about this, Sean, you didn't remember anybody taking pictures, did you? No. And then Mr. Stevens helped you remember that Miss Virginia took pictures. Yes. And so you said, yes, Virginia did. Yes. And you did that because you knew he wanted you to say that, right? Yes. And you thought if you didn't, it would make him sad, right? Yeah. You're telling the story that Key wants you to tell. Yes. And the story that everybody talks to you about this case would like you to tell. Yes. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. And thank you, Snoopy. Court will recess for 15 minutes. Sean, did anybody tell you what to say when you were in court? No. Now, when Mr. Davis asked you if you were saying the things that everybody wanted you to say, you said yes. What did you mean by that? I said it because I know they wanted me to tell the truth, and I would please them that way. Thank you, Sean. Witness will step down. Court will recess. Think we did it or not? No, it's good. It's a good trial. Oh, right. And, and to really make Correct. your day, during the recess, one of the parents tells the press he's found porno pictures of the kids. Oh, no. But, but, oh, but, no. no. He says he can't produce them because, listen to this, there are four cops on the Manhattan Beach Police Department involved in a sex room. What? What? I don't know. You told millions of people on television that Jim here was part of a sex ring. Now say it in front of him. Okay. You said you were pornographic pictures. Either you give them to me or I'll hold you in custody until you do. But there aren't any pictures, are there? What the hell's the matter with you? Jim here's got high blood pressure as it is without you making up something like that. Why'd you do it? We got national coverage for an important issue affecting the lives of innocent children. Did you ever hear the term, the end justifies the means? Okay, let's strip the back and check out that pillow. I got it. Check it all off, check it all out. I got it. I'm not supposed to bring anything back from court. It was, it was just something my mother made. She crocheted it for me. Okay, take your clothes off. All of them. Hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up. The 
You have to go over every cavity. Okay, now. Pull your ears towards me. Shake your hair. Pull up your stomach. Okay. Now, bend over. Pull open your vagina. Cough. <coughs> the reason for the coughing is they like to bring things in stuffed up their vaginas. I'm kidding. I like drugs, guns. You wouldn't believe what you could fit up there. I had one once, brought in six packs of cigarettes. <laughs> Can I put on my clothes? So what are you doing tonight? I don't know. I thought a kitchen with Clint Eastwood would do it. How about you? I'm gonna shoot some pool. I want to go home. She wouldn't even let Dad see her naked. Can't believe they'd do that to her. Do we have to keep lugging the school stuff around? Can't we get rid of it? This is the sixth time we've had to move it. <sighs> Graham? smile. Doesn't it make you bitter? Of course it does. But who says I can't be bitter and still enjoy the sight of little kids playing? <laughs> Where did Peggy Ann touch you on your body? On my dick. Did you have to touch Peggy Ann? Yes. Where? On her boobs. Did you have to touch any other part of her body besides her boobs? Her puss. Did you see Ray do anything to Peggy Ann? He would put his dick in her puss. Did you see Ray do anything to the animals at school? He would cut the ears off the rabbits. Did Ray say anything while he was doing that to the rabbits? He said it would happen to our parents if we told any of our secrets. Did the teachers take you any other place outside of school? To Harry's Market. They took us in the storage room and touched us on our dicks and took pictures. Did you go anyplace else besides the market? To a church. St. Cross Church. What happened at the church? They took us down the aisle and on the altar they put animals like birds and rabbits and chopped them to pieces. Who is they, Jonathan? I saw people wearing black costumes with ropes around their waist. And it would look really scary. And sometimes they have devil suits on. Devil suits? Yeah. And we were forced to drink rabbit blood. Oh, oh, oh. With the old boy, gave perhaps the most terrifying testimony so far. As you told me, did you hear what he said in there? They'll kill us. Sacrifices in a church. Just take it easy, Christine. Glenn, has Reuben been telling Ryan the problems we're having? I don't know. Well, she told me she would. I mean, if she doesn't, I will. Told a rabbit courthouse how he was forced to drink the blood of a slaughtered rabbit. What did you think of Brian's testimony? Do you think there was actually Satanism practiced at the McMartin School? Can you, can you believe this shit? When I first that, I think sacrifices, Jesus, group sex, people walking around in robes. I mean, next they're going to have some kid telling about the guy they the nailed to a the cross. Or started, the virgin they sacrificed on the altar. This is getting scary. It's out of control. control. Have seen don't you think? TV talking about this. Huh? I mean, don't, don't you think so? I do. I think this is out of control. I believe we may be dealing with a nationwide conspiracy of child predators who are operating daycare centers as a cover for child abuse. Satanism, devil worship, is being practiced all across the country. We have all types of perversion. Is cannibalism part of the ritual? The children have spoken about this in almost children every instance. We're made to chew pieces of these children's hearts, pieces of their flesh. When parents begin to realize these things are really happening and not just something out of the dark ages, it'll be much more difficult for these people to pull these things off. When 
we hear of ritual sacrifices, our reaction is one of horrific avoidance. We say things like, this only happened in the Middle Ages. It doesn't mean that children are not telling the truth. So where is your storage room? I'll show you. Oh. This is it? Mm -hmm. But you can see the whole room from the store. My cashier is over there. He can see everything from the cafe. And it's always been this way? Always. Is there any way what he said could have happened? Well, our doors are always locked. We had a robbery in the office one night, and the police told us that they wouldn't give us any surveillance unless we kept the doors locked. Could someone have broken in? No. Not without the treasurer, the secretary, or the accountant hearing it from the chapel. Virginia, can we get some Did you hold the door, please? Hey, Virginia, can we get some more Virginia, can we get some more Hold it! Hold it, Virginia! Hold it, Virginia! Are you sure you can ride in the same elevators as Mr. Satz? We might pull out a rabbit and drink its blood. I took off our clothes and danced around naked. Miss Bucky, I don't make the news. I just report it. And how do you expect anybody to know your side if you won't tell them what you're feeling and that you're innocent? You wouldn't be interested in you knowing. All you want is free fucking animals. Sorry, no comments. Virginia McMartin slash kids in a wheelchair. Peggy and Bucky made a three-year-old child copulator. You couldn't care less about the truth. No no more questions. What were you thinking? Don't you ever do that. Don't ever do that again. Oh, not. This whole thing's a farce. Nothing after the school. You know it, and he knows it. Somebody has to be the voice of sanity. I like your witnesses. One of them recants, saying he was making it all up so you wouldn't be sad. The other says he went to St. Cross Church and a rabbit was killed on the altar and he had to drink its blood. What are you trying to do, win your case or audition for Saturday Night Live? Why the hell did you use them? I'll answer that for Glenn, because they're the best witnesses we have. What about the tapes? Uh, you have to see them to believe them. What does that mean? The kids don't have to say anything. Key McFarlane and Sandy Krebs tell them everything. If they say they weren't molested, they say, well, everybody else said you were, so you must be wrong. And if they say they were molested, say, boy, you're really amazing. Well, what did you expect? The kids were just going to come out and say, hey, I was raped and sodomized, especially after they were threatened with harm to their parents? Let me ask a silly question. Why am I hearing this for the first time? Didn't anybody look at the evidence a long time ago? Yes, of course we did, but when we filed the charges, th there wasn't time. There was just too much of it. We had to rely on McFarland's logs. Well, aren't they reliable? No, they're not. What exactly do we have going for us? We have a confession. Freeman, the guy who was in the cell with Bucky. Do you believe him? I don't bring forward witnesses I don't believe in. I don't like snitches, neither do juries. Well, they might not like them, but they're impressed by them, even if it's only on a subliminal basis. What about the medical evidence that they were abused? We can't get any doctor who is independent of CII to corroborate it. No one of stature. They say it's inconclusive. I want recommendations. Stevens? Well, there, there are problems with the case, but there are other considerations, too like the media please leave them out of it i'm developing a reasonable doubt on six i say drop the charges against the women are you serious they molested children what about bucky can we get a conviction maybe maybe <laughs> he wasn't even at the school when four of the children are saying he molested them and the kids stories are changing they said that they were taken by the teachers to car washes to mortuaries to cemeteries flown in an airplane to Palm Springs. Not one piece of corroboration. Not one person saw them. All right, look, this office can do what it wants. As far as I'm concerned, I don't intend to drop any of the charges against any of the defendants. I think we have a clear duty here. But if we're not even sure about Bucky. Look, look, 
Here is a guy who abuses drugs, who flunked out of almost every school he ever attended, who sits in this preschool day after day with his genitals exposed to these children. And there's something even more significant. What? Let me have a picture, Glenn. This is a picture of Bucky at a pyramid convention. You see this woman here? She told investigators she took him to a motel. The woman even paid the tab, and Bucky couldn't get it up. What does that have to do with molesting children? Put it together with the rest of the evidence, Christine. Obviously, this is a man for whom normal sex is not possible. He had to gratify himself some way. Don't you think this begins to add up? Maybe. But that doesn't explain his mother, his sister, his grandmother. The old woman in the dark glasses? Look, Glenn. You don't think that women are capable of the same desires and the same aberrations as men? Philibosian. 208 counts. Do you think he overfired? <laughs> Could be the election had something to do with it, do you think? All right, all right. Look, just because we're having some trouble with some evidence, that doesn't make these people suddenly innocent. Children don't lie about this kind of thing. There is a smoking gun out there. I know it. We've just got to find it. Somebody is going to get drunk and confide in someone. Somebody is going to attempt suicide and leave a note. Somebody is going to find those pornographic pictures. That's all we need. One picture. One. I'd like to say something. What is this about, Mrs. McMartin? Please be seated. You told my lawyer that the county will no longer agree to pay him his fee. I have no more money. They took my school. I have nothing left. Mr. Bruna knew what he was getting into when he took this case, and he's been paid a large sum of money. He will continue on to the end of the hearing. I've never accepted charity before, and I don't intend to now. Then I'll get you another attorney. I won't talk to him. Mrs. McMartin, do you have any knowledge of the law? I have something more important. I know the children. I've had them all sit on my lap. Yes, well, I think my all decision, of you better take Mr. a Bruno course will continue in on children. As your counsel, as to not I will not, with the end and of I will hearing. get up and walk out of this courtroom Mrs. if you Martin, insist you on it. You will remain in the courtroom. Please don't. You will have to stay, ma'am. Are you going to use force? Why don't you have a seat? I will not have a seat. If you wish to use force, do it. You're a little bigger than I. You are ordered to sit down, or you will be cited for contempt. Please, Your Honor. Put me in jail. Your Honor. I've been in your jail. I know what terrible places they are. Mom, you, you want to go to jail? You wouldn't be able to stand it, and you know it. This is you do not want to go to this jail. This is Nick Martin. Please, Your Honor. I know how you feel, but this is not the way. Don't make things worse for your family, please. Graham? Is this Judy? What what happened? What what is Malcolm okay? He's all right for now, but the dog's <clears throat> behind his red too. And it's missing hair there too. Judy, are you trying to tell me that someone molested your dog? Yes. I think it was the Marine. He's been following me. He's going to Judy, kill us. I know what the hell are you talking about? Did you ever read the note she wrote describing what happened? Malcolm was hurt by a lion. Uh, there was a baby. The head was chopped open and the brains were burned. Malcolm had to drink the baby's blood. Did the defense get this note? I assume Reuben sent it over. Then we're off the hook, because I sure as hell don't have time to butt heads with her. At the cemetery, you were forced to dig up the bodies of dead people. Yes. And did the teachers give the kids shovels to dig up the bodies? Yes. Permission to approach, Your Honor. Now, these are pictures of some men with numbers under them, right? Yes. Look at these very carefully, Aaron. And if you see any of the men who went with you to the cemetery, draw a circle around the pictures with the red pencil. OK. 
Okay. Your Honor, I would like to indicate for the record that Aaron has identified City Attorney James Hahn and actor Chuck Norris. Thank you. This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. Joining us now live in our Los Angeles bureau is Daniel Davis, who is defense attorney for Raymond Bucky, one of the defendants in the McMartin case. Mr. Davis, I understand that your first responsibility is to your client and to come up with the best defense you possibly can for him, but it doesn't sound as though you're taking any prisoners among your six and seven-year-old witnesses. My client is in jail at this moment without bail because of the statements of these children. That's good. Is it necessary to be quite that tough with him? Mr. Bucky is being held, an innocent man without bail. Based Doesn't on this frighten you? What? So it is really. So you're getting to be as much despised as the McMartin's. Maybe huh? even more. It is Thanks a for sharing. That I'm having trouble that frightens me. This case is a nightmare. The they got the train on the tracks. It's like rolling. It's winning them votes and sound bites, but nobody's willing to put on their brakes. Of course, it frightens me. The train, fast track. I mean, what? You make it sound like it's so exciting. Fred. But it's not. It's taking you nowhere. Why are you doing this? Look, huh? look. Just get out of this case. It's going to cost you your career. Are you kidding? This case is why guys go to law school. This case is about justice. It's a simple Come on. Give me a break, hey, uh, Danny. This case is just as scummy as all the others, even scummier. And, and you know what? If you do win this case, you're just going to encourage child abusers to think that they can get away with it. You know what? You're just like all the rest. You are so wrong, it's pathetic. You know, you just say the word kids and everybody rushes to judgment. Hang them, fry them, just string them up by their fingernails. How come everybody in America knows these people are guilty? What about the facts? What about the fucking facts? Well, if you're so sure you're right, then why are you yelling? Be because I didn't grow up with the advantages you grew up with, okay? I grew up in a slum where everybody called a spade a goddamn shovel. I'm not a club type of lawyer, I'm just a hack. Yeah, and maybe I'm part of what's fucking up the system because the system is fucked up and everybody should know about it. You know what's basically at stake here? It's called the rule of law, and I happen to like it. Judy? Get off my land. This is sacred property. Judy? It's me, Steve. What are you doing with that thing? Don't you touch my children. Don't you touch my babies. Or I'll kill you. I'm Jesus Johnson. She pulled out a 12-gauge shotgun on her brother because she thought he was coming to kill her babies. All she talks about is how the neighbors are trying to sexually molest her kids. What is it? Acute paranoid schizophrenia, and the drinking doesn't help. What do you mean, the drinking? An alcoholic for years. Didn't you know that? Mm. We'll recess for a late lunch. Court will resume at 2.30. Let's go. Okay. Come on. See you after lunch. Mm. Time to go. We're going to go through each one. Come on. Let's go. All right, easy. Come on. Okay. Come on. See you later. See you Come tomorrow, on. dear. I'll be here, sweetheart. I'll be here. Come on. Don't forget to take your medicine. Come on, let's go. Don't push me so fast. Come Please on, let's don't go. go so fast. Oh! Peggy! Uh -huh. okay, okay, Peggy! Okay, okay. Okay. I don't want to make sure right. you're right. 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 We're not doing any of it. No, she's all right. She just trips. Okay. I saw it. I saw it. She's okay. I don't trust you. I don't trust any of you. She's going to be okay. All I've heard are lies. Lies from the first day in this courtroom. You calm down. She's fine. She's What's fine. happened to my daughter? She just stumbled. Hey, Faye. Hey. Can I buy you lunch? Sure. We were just going to that Greek place. They have pea soup today. Okay. Uh, I can uh, speak to you guys off the record, right? Whammo. It's got to be Glenn Stevens. He's the only one in that office with enough guts. This is unbelievable. Whoa. 
Are you really naive enough to think that a reporter would keep it off the record that the DA's office doubts its own case, Glenn? And you did it anonymously? Half the people will think I did it. This thing's gonna follow my career forever. How could you do it, Glenn? Why? Because I think they're innocent. Don't you? Come on, Christine. Didn't it get to you? What about what's right? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where does this sanctimonious tone come from, my friend? You don't know they're innocent. You are a public prosecutor. Your job is to see that justice gets served. For you to go behind everybody's back like this is unethical and cowardly, period. If it's any satisfaction to you, I think you have sabotaged this case beyond repair. Well, if it's any satisfaction to you, I've sabotaged my career beyond repair in order to do it. You'll have my resignation on your desk in the morning. conference with my staff, we've all come to the same conclusion. The evidence against five in this case is so incredibly weak, it does not go beyond mere accusation. We are dropping charges against five of the defendants in the McMartin case. Yes. On the other hand, we have clear and convincing evidence that Ray Bucky molested children. There is equally clear and equally convincing evidence that his mother, Peggy Bucky, was also involved. Thank you. Well, he let five go. That's something. You got to give him credit for that. Yeah, for what? Trying to have it both ways? He knows he can't get a conviction with all seven, but he can't let him go. He knows that Ray and Peggy have been kept in jail all this time without bail and on his watch. He's just looking for scapegoats to cover his ass. There is furious reaction tonight against the prosecution's latest move in the case that helped center national attention on the problem. I'd like Ira Reiner to go to the 300 victims and explain why these people who have hurt them are allowed to go free. Look, yeah. look, look, I would never get involved in any vigilante activity, but I wouldn't want to be one of these defendants walking the streets. Well, what's being sassed these days? Now that some of the shoes are on the other foot. That's a good question, you know. Come in. Long distance. Who is this? Is this Key? Who is it? Who's hmm. calling? It's Chris Woodyard of the Examiner. It's Chris Woodyard of the Examiner. Hello? What did you answer the phone for? Anybody there? Hello? Chris. What's up? Been getting a little help from Deep Throat, Wayne? What are you talking about? The puppet lady? How long have you been living with her? What? <laughs> Conflict of interest? Fucking the source of the story. How long have you been doing it? No wonder you've gotten so many exclusives, eh? I'm proud of my work on this case. Hmm. I won a Peabody and two Golden Mike Awards for it, so just maybe jealousy might be a motive here. Oh, You're a piece of shit, Wayne. You're the reason people hate the press. We are going to nail your ass so bad yeah, that you, you try it. But you be careful what you put on the air. I'm not only a reporter, I'm a lawyer, too, and there are laws about these things. You can't just say anything you like on TV, you know? I don't think you have anything to worry about. I think it'll be fair. Just tell it like it is. Tell the truth. Everything will be okay. I don't know why I agreed to do this. Isn't nice? Pretty, doesn't she? You look really nice. Mm. Oh, yeah. Come on. You look good. This is 60 Minutes. Well, during the time that I was in jail, 
The custody of my children was taken away from me. They were taken from the school that we placed them in. They were arrested. I don't know for what. At that time, my son was eight. Along with everyone else, I lost every material possession I ever had. I lost all my teaching credentials, which I'd gone six years of college to get. In this country, if you're accused, you're guilty. God help you if you try to prove you're innocent. Fucking ain't right. And that's the way we've been treated from the first day. You know who should be made to watch this? Ira Reiner. Ira Reiner should be made to watch this. You gonna get him on camera? Virginia McMartin, Betty Rader, Mary Ann Jackson, Peggy Ann Bucky. Their homes, their money, their honor. Everything gone. Deserved? No, of course not. So who do these people go to to get their money back and their life back? The county? Your predecessor? Children's Institute International? That's not the sort of question I should be getting into. Do you think you can get into Grant Bale, Peggy? God, I hope so. She's 62 years old. They've kept her for 18 months without a trial. It's unbelievable. Uh, the trial itself will take another year and a half. They can't let this happen. Be a scandal. That's all? This is it? I'll leave it here. Let's see what I can do. You always used to love to come here. Like you said, I want to go home. No, Mom. Not back to that little apartment. Not yet. Please. You haven't been outdoors once since you got out. Please. I promise there's nothing here to hurt you. Okay? Come on. We'll just take a little walk, okay? There's nothing to be afraid of. It's just us. I know. I know. Now there's nothing to be afraid of, but I... I am afraid. I'm so afraid. I'm afraid they'll come in the middle of the night again and arrest me. I know I've done nothing wrong. But why is this happening? It's like God is punishing me for something. All I've ever known is teaching children, and I can never do that again. Everything is lost. <laughs> and you, your youth, you never smile anymore like you used to. And Ray, Ray, Ray is still in there. I mean, how can he endure it? He will endure it. You did. We all will. You gotta see this. Uh, I think it was Pemberton versus. Danny, look versus at this. Danny, look at this. Superior Court, 1962. Yeah, I mean, right now. Look, look. It came our way last night. Where'd you get this, Stevens? Mm. Holy shit. Mr. Davis, can I help you? No. Sir. The Judy Johnson discovery. Would we have a trial if I had just to present in court? Don't I don't think so. I don't. Fucking and think so. You don't swear. Judy me. Johnson, the you knew she was nuts. She's the man accuser in your case, and you knew she was a fucking banana. Do not shout at me. Who the hell do you think you are? Why didn't I get this before? Well, who do you think you're talking to here, Mr. Davis? Are you expecting me to be personally responsible for every piece of evidence that yes, comes down the Yes, I am. Time? It was not my job to get it, it to you. It is your you job. You received a summary. You could have followed up. Bullshit. Why don't that... you take care of your side of Bullshit. the case? Bullshit. Your back's against the wall and you know it. Why didn't you file charges against Judy Johnson's husband? 
She accused him of molesting Malcolm, the same woman who accused my clients. You don't see a problem that I didn't get to see this? Yes, I see a problem. Thank you. It's not my problem. It is your problem. I don't know why you didn't get it. As for Judy Johnson, she only accused her husband after she became unstable. She became unstable after what happened oh. to her son. After damage is inflicted on oh. him by your client. Where did you come from? Did you read this thing? Did you? You didn't press charges against Judy Johnson's husband because you didn't want it to mess up your nice, neat witch hunt against my clients. Fine. You know what I'm going to do about this? I'm going to the judge. I'm going to ask him to recuse you and the entire district attorney's office for prosecutorial misconduct. I have seldom seen anything as explosive as this handwritten letter from Judy Johnson that was allegedly not passed on to the defense. The prosecution maintains that they only sent over a typewritten summary of this evidence earlier because they were overwhelmed by the sheer volume of the material. I accept this explanation and am therefore going to dismiss the charges of prosecutorial misconduct. However, the court does grant the defense's request to examine Mrs. Johnson. Clearly, she is a crucial witness. Roger, we're at location, over. Every day, she heard herself being ridiculed and ripped apart by Mr. Davis on the news. I would hope the defense attorneys are now beginning to regret their comments. There's nothing beneath the prosecution, is there? The body's not even cold yet. How do you think she felt reading, reading every day in the newspapers that this case was spawned by a mad woman? So it is, are you it is, it is, it is, it is commendable of the prosecution to have such compassion for Mrs. Johnson now that she's dead. But did they, know they knew from the beginning that she was mentally ill, but they did not suggest she be helped because they were afraid the defense might find out about it. Is this <laughs> than most of us suffer in a lifetime. Not as for much as... As, what? as, what? as, what? as, what? as I tell you there, but for the grace of God, go you and I. How did you I know this? Police investigators say they believe Judy Johnson's death was a result of an accidental alcohol overdose. Mrs. Johnson was a key figure in the McMartin case, and it was her allegations that led to the first charges being filed against Raymond Bucky. Ta-da! I know you like to think of yourself as an athlete, so let's see how many miles you can ride on this thing every day. Judy Johnson's dead. I know, Ray. And it's too bad. But we don't need her. Thanks, boys. We don't need her. She was a whole case. Thanks, Al. Now she's dead. I can't take this anymore, Danny. You're gonna have to. Every night, I lie in my bed in that tiny little cell and my mind whirls around and around. Why shouldn't I just put a plastic bag over my head or slip my wrist? Or have someone else jam a shank through my ear? What am I hanging around for? Listen to these kids rip the skin off me? Watch my family get humiliated? Watch them lose everything they had? They hate me, Daddy! I'm like Freddy Krueger, these people! I'm Charles Manson! I mean, they use my name to scare their little kids before they go to sleep! You're right. I'll never lie to you, Ray. They do hate you. But we're gonna make them hate someone else. We're gonna make the jury hate someone else. What are you talking about? Lyle Rubin. What do you think your case is going to be, Ray? I'll tell you. She's going to make a big deal out of the fact that you had a picture from a skin magazine as proof that you molest children. She's going to show that you're a bad guy because sometimes you forget to wear your BVDs. She's going to make the fact that you aren't chasing everything in a skirt proof that you are chasing five-year-olds. What do you think is going to happen when she shows up in court with this flimsy rag of a case? Everyone is going to see the emperor's new clothes. They're going to see through the innuendos and the bullshit and the stories. And they're going to see that if somebody's on trial, for screwing people. Maybe it shouldn't be Ray Bucky. Okay? Now, son, I want you to get your ass in this bike and see how many miles you can clock. Or you can let Lyle Rubin and Key McFarland dance all over your grave. Ta-da. Come on, son. Today, Nearly four years after the first arrest in the McMartin preschool molestation case, defendants Raymond Bucky and his mother, Peggy McMartin Bucky, will finally go on trial before a jury of eight men and four women.
Uh, Mr. Freeman, did Raymond Bucky confess to you that he had sex with children? He said he sexually assaulted children. Will you tell us the words he used? You want me to? Yes. Well, he said he, uh, he fucked a two-year-old boy in the butt. Did the defendant say what he used when he fucked this two-year-old boy, to use his words? Should he usually use baby oil and KY jelly? Mm -hmm. Did the defendant say that anything happened when he used the KY or the baby oil? Yeah. He said if he didn't use baby oil, it, uh, the boy bled. Oh, Mr. Davis, it seems we have a bit of a problem. What is that, Your Honor? I wanted us to meet because I think Mr. Freeman should have an attorney. He told me that he committed perjury in other cases. When did he tell you this? Three weeks ago. But you're telling me that you knew before Freeman got on the stand that he'd perjured himself and you let him testify without informing the court? To be honest with you, I hadn't considered the fact that he might need an attorney until now. <laughs> you know what? we face giving him immunity or calling a mistrial. Call a mistrial. mistrial? You can't let this happen. Do you know how much the state has spent on this case so far? I don't give a damn how much it costs. It's a mistrial. This is outrageous. You may not give a damn, but I do and the people of Los Angeles do. Your Honor. It is my view that Mr. Freeman must testify. And the only way to do that is through immunity. Miss Rubin planned this all along. Mr. Davis, my ruling will stand. So when Freeman came to you with his problem, what did you say? Don't worry, George. Get your garbage in. I'll protect you. I said nothing of the kind. And let's not go public with this, please. The district attorney's office and the judge are saying to George Freeman, go ahead, lie, perjure yourself. You won't be prosecuted, but there's one thing they cannot grant him immunity on, and that is murder. Murder? murder. George murder. Freeman committed a murder? Oh, why wasn't he indicted? Why not? Why do you think he wasn't indicted? Are you what suggesting a deal was made no. not to indict <laughs> Freeman if he agreed to testify against Ray Bucky? I'm not suggesting anything. You draw your own conclusions. But George Freeman is the prosecution's super-duper Whopper Jumbo Cheeseburger Deluxe with extra special sauce. Now, either you swallow it or you have a delicate stomach and it smells bad, you don't go near it. Doesn't make any difference because before this is over, I am going to convict George Freeman of that murder. Thank you. No more questions. You don't have anything on this murder, do you? Not a thing. Are you kidding? The star witness in the McMartin molestation trial, George Freeman, was arrested this morning when he failed to show up in court. Sheriff's deputies tracked Freeman down here to his sister's house in the San Fernando Valley where he had gone into hiding. They found him squatting behind a number of boxes in the garage. He surrendered to the deputies without incident and is expected to appear in court tomorrow morning. You're upset with me, aren't you? You know I am. Did it disturb you, what I said about getting you convicted of murder? I don't care. Mr. Freeman, have you ever been convicted of what might be called willful cruelty to children? Yeah. Isn't it true that you once tied up your mother and sister? burglarized other parts of the house and left them tied up? Only God would know, right? Right. Mr. Freeman, do you have any credibility in your own opinion? No. Well, that's all. Thank you. Did you appear on a program in which Wayne Satz announced that 60 children were making allegations against Raymond Bucky before the case had even gone before the grand jury? I believe I did. Didn't it concern you that you might be compromising the investigation of the case? Yes, it did, and I was very upset by it, and I told Mr. Satz so. You were so upset about it that you moved in with him, is that right? Objection, Your Honor. Ms. McFarland's intimate relations are not an issue in this trial. Sustained. Do you think you are qualified to judge whether a child has been molested or not? Objection. Miss McFarlane is not on trial here, even if Mr. Davis would like to put her on trial. What is Miss Rubin afraid of? Miss McFarlane was touted by the DA's office as their expert witness, going around the country giving speeches. What's happened all of a sudden? Are you afraid she won't pass muster? Objection overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Answer the question, please. Do you think you are qualified? Since I've spent the majority of my professional life devoted to the subject, I think so, yes. What is your educational background as far as diagnosing children? I have a master's degree in social work from the University of Maryland. Did the curriculum include any study in child abuse? Yes. Oh. What portion dealt with that? Well, it's a liberal arts program with psychology, sociology, and those basic courses cover children. 
Well, have you ever treated children in the psychiatric sense? I don't understand what you mean. You know what psychiatric is. Have you ever heard of that, psychiatric? Objection. Would you instruct Mr. Davis to stop harassing the witness? I think if this witness doesn't know what psychiatric means and she has presented herself as an expert, then the court ought to know about that, don't you think? Objection overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Answer the question, please. Have you ever treated children in a psychiatric sense? No. How have you treated them? I've treated them as a social worker. You worked in Maryland and New Jersey and California, is that right? Yes. Were you licensed in New Jersey or Maryland? Not licensed. Are you licensed in California? No. You are not licensed to work as a therapist or a social worker in any state, are you? That's correct. Thank you. Where did you learn these techniques that you use with these children? From working with families and attending virtually every conference on child abuse in the country. I don't know of any library that's more extensive than my own on the subject. Permission to approach the witness, Your Honor, and I would like to mark into evidence defense exhibits... KKLL. KKLL. Your Honor. Thank you. You use dolls like these? Yes. Why? To familiarize the children with their body parts so they're able to talk about it. It's very difficult for them to say the words. Some of them aren't even able to articulate what's happened to them. How do you know anything happened to them? I made a determination. Some of them were in your office only a few minutes before you undressed these dolls. How could you tell? By the way they were acting. By their not wanting to talk about it. Did it ever occur to you that they didn't want to talk about it because nothing happened? Something happened to them, Mr. Davis. You used different dolls to represent the teachers, did you not? Yes. Did you choose black dolls to represent Raymond Bucky, Miss McFarlane? The children picked the dolls. Your Honor, I would like to present into evidence sections of the videotape made by Miss McFarlane of the children. Thank you. And the little boys have, guess what, down here? A real looking penis. Now, which doll do you think would be good for Ray? I don't know. Okay, how about this one? Okay. What I like is their hair, even though it doesn't really look like real hair, does it? Fuzzy. Look! He's got a little hair on his great big ugly penis. Were you trying to teach these children a little bit of racism? I don't associate the use of dolls of different color with racism. You weren't trying to make them think that Ray Bucky was a bad man, were you? I don't perceive a black doll as inherently having a negative characteristic. How about when you remove the doll's pants and add, oh, he has hair on his great, big, ugly penis. I commented about all the dolls. I was trying to let them know I was the kind of person they could say anything to. And who is this? Miss Peggy. Miss Peggy. Now, doesn't she have funny looking boobies? Look at these little hard things that stick out. Have you ever seen boobies with these lines in them? Why do you call her Miss Piggy instead of Miss Peggy? What do you mean when you talk about her boobs with lines? I don't think you understand how frightened these children were. It's an attempt to jog their memories, sort out which teacher was which. All right, Mr. Monkey, are you going to be stupid or are you going to be smart and help us out here? Because some people think you're stupid, Mr. Monkey. Well, I'll be smart. You will? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mr. Monkey's a chicken, and he can't remember any of the naked games, but we think we know a game that Mr. Monkey remembers. It's the naked movie star game. Do you remember that game? 
Or is your memory too bad? You told Sam that he was stupid and that he was a chicken and that his memory was too bad. Is that right? I was talking to the puppet. You don't think little Sam thought you were calling him dumb? If I believed that, Mr. Davis, I wouldn't have said it. Now, what the other kids did is they took this doll, Ray, and they started eating like that. You want to punch him like the other kids did? Go ahead. That's it. Good for you. Good for you. You want to punch him? Why did you encourage her to beat the doll that was supposed to represent Ray? Don't you think this kind of thing leads the children to believe that he was a bad man? Not at all. It was therapy. It's best that they let their anger out rather than keeping it bottled up inside of themselves for years. It can become a time bomb if it's repressed. Sandra Krebs, your assistant, you taught her your technique, did you not? Yes, I did. And she was initially employed as your video camera operator, was she not? You seem to give a great priority to formal education, Mr. Davis. Miss McFarlane, this was, in your words, one of the biggest molestation cases in the history of the world. Why didn't you hire the most experienced person you could get? Because some of them wouldn't have had the courage to do what had to be done. What courage was that? Simply to find out the truth. Remember all the times your mom asked you if anything happened? A hundred and... Fifty-nine times. I know what we'll do. We tried this with another little girl. Here's Big Bird. <laughs> now what this little girl did was she squeaked once for no and twice for yes. Can you do that? Once for no and twice for yes. When Jennifer was touched at the school, was it a hand that touched her? No. No. Did Ray sometimes do yucky things to some of the kids? No. No. Sometimes people we like can touch kids in places that are uncomfortable and scary. Did you know that Ray did that to some of the kids? No. No. We don't want to hear any more no's. No, 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 no. You told this child's parents that she was molested. Did you not? We said she was in denial. Did the parents see all of the tapes? I beg your pardon? Did they see all of the tapes, Miss McFarland? No, we were interviewing 400 children and more were calling all the time. So all you had to do was press fast forward on the VCR and you had at your fingertips each child saying whether or not he or she had been molested. Is that correct? You give me too much credit, Mr. Davis. The very idea that after an hour or two with me, a child would say he was molested even if he wasn't makes me out to be some sort of genius. Children between three and six can be very easily tricked. They are at this developmental stage of magical thinking. It is very easy to intimidate them. You did make that statement, didn't you, Miss McFarlane? I knew what would happen when I put myself on the line with these tapes. I knew people like you would pick apart every word, every inflection, but somebody had to do it, Mr. Davis, so the children could tell the truth. The truth. Was what you got the truth? What are you trying to suggest? I would deliberately plant false ideas in their heads? Is that why you think I entered into all of this? No, I, I think that you entered into all of this for a very noble reason. To help children that you honestly thought had been traumatized and maybe spare them going through another trauma in this very courtroom. But I also believe that you must have known what a dangerous technique this was. Highly suggestive. A technique that was meant to be used where abuse was already an established fact. And yet in this case, there was no such evidence that abuse had occurred. And you went ahead and used this technique anyway. And this technique became the evidence. That's ridiculous. Of course there was abuse. The children told me, I heard them. And you and the entire justice system are trying to stop them from telling the truth. Well, I don't blame you for not wanting to face reality, Miss McFarlane. Because the reality is this. You didn't listen to these children. 
you closed your ears to the truth that they were so desperately trying to tell you. And you ended up implanting instead in their fertile imaginations a memory of something that never happened. Why would I do that? Well, I don't know why, Miss McFarlane. I do know that Mr. Satz came along, didn't he? And then you suddenly became the Joan of Arc of the children's movement. Your Honor. You were the champion of children's rights, their savior. Mr. Davis. Maybe it all went to your head. Maybe the power trip was too much to resist. Your Honor. What power trip? A halo around your head on Oprah every afternoon at three. You were on a roll, weren't you? Did it your Honor, objection. Mr. Davis. Great. That's enough. Objection sustained. Thank you, Your Honor. I have no more questions. Raymond Bucky has now spent five years in jail without bail, a new record in California history which has generated criticism in legal circles. But today, in a major defense victory, Judge Pounders has granted him that bail and placed him in the custody of his attorney, Daniel Davis. Come on, Mr. Bucky, you know you're a pedophile. You can't cut it with anyone but children because you can make them do anything you want. Please answer the question, Mr. Bucky. Stop it, stop it, I can't take this anymore. All right, all right, cool down. This is the kind of crap that they're going to keep shoveling at you all day long tomorrow. And you've got to look every one of those jurors in the eye, Ray. You keep looking away from them. I need you to connect with every single one of them. I can't do that. Why not? What are you afraid of? I just spent the last five years in jail. Oh, here we go. I don't know how to behave anymore. I mean, here's this woman who tells lies about me and, and puts my mother behind bars and then rips the skin off me every chance she gets. How do I know I'm not just going to jump out of the witness box and, and strangle her or burst into tears? Because that's exactly what she wants you to do. OK, you've told me what you're afraid of. You want to know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid that I'm just a back alley lawyer. I represent drug dealers and scumbags for a living. I'm afraid Lyle Rubin and Ira Reiner and the entire DA's department is just going to eat me alive. But I've got one thing they haven't got right. I've got you. And the only thing you've got is me. So tomorrow I'm going to swallow my fear and I'm going to get up there and I'm going to fight them. And you're going to tell them something they haven't heard in that courtroom yet in this trial, Ray. You're going to tell them the truth. And the jury is either going to believe us or they aren't, son. If they believe us, Ray, you're going to be a free man. And if they don't, yeah, you understand? I understand. Mr. Bucky, you've heard all these children accuse you of sodomizing them. Of killing animals. Of threatening to kill their parents if they told anyone. Were all these children lying? No, not all of them. What do you mean, not all of them? Well, I think some of the children were led to believe these things happened. Permission to approach, Your Honor? Granted. Do you recognize these pictures? What's the matter? You afraid of them? Look at them. Pick them up. Will you tell the jury what's on the first one, please? It's a picture of a man giving oral sex to a woman. Why did you keep it? Self-gratification. You masturbated with them, did you not? Will you tell the jury how you did that, please? What do you mean? Isn't it true that you pasted this to the window of your apartment and masturbated on the bed in a position where people in the street could see you as they walked by? No, that's not true. That's not what two of your neighbors said. You can't see into my bedroom from the street. You think a person who does this should work at a preschool? I don't think it has anything to do with the preschool. Then why did you tear this up when the police came? Why did you flush it down the toilet? I was afraid of what they might make out of it. What might they make out of it? What you're trying to make out of it now. Isn't it true that you regularly sat facing the waiting pool at the preschool in your shorts without any underwear with your genitals exposed to the children? No, that isn't true. I didn't wear underwear, but my shorts came halfway down my thighs. You're a normal, heterosexual, typical young man. Is that true, Mr. Bucky? I don't know if there is such a thing, Miss Rubin. 
Isn't it true that the only gratification you have ever had or ever will have is with these children, Mr. Bucky? That you are incapable of having satisfactory sex with a grown woman? I may have done some stupid things in my life. And I am far from perfect, but I have never had sex with a child. I've never hurt a child. And I have had satisfactory sex with a grown woman, Miss Rubin. Mm-hmm. Do you have an interest in pyramids, Mr. Bucky? Objection. Irrelevant. Overruled. What are pyramids? They're supposed to have a positive effect on living things. Uh, it helps you sleep if you put one over your bed. It's just a fad. Did you fly to a convention where pyramids were sold? Objection. Your, Your Honor, I, I think we'd better approach, if we may, please. Very well. Your Honor, I must object. Miss Rubin is trying to convert pyramids into pentagrams and turn my client into Dracula. You categorize is... Peggy Bucky as a caring teacher. Would a caring person allow somebody who abuses drugs and flies off to pyramid conventions to work at her school? Objection overruled. Continue. Permission to approach, Your Honor? Granted. Is this a picture of you at a convention holding a pyramid? Yes. You see the woman on the right-hand side of the photograph? Yes. Who is Diana Sullivan? I told you about her. We had an affair. She told two investigators otherwise. I don't see what it matters whether or not I slept with her. Well, I think the DA is going to bring her here and get her to tell the jury that you don't have sex with women, and it's going to hurt us, Ray. I don't think she'll do that. Oh, really? Why is that? Because what, you become a secret stud all of a sudden? Ray? I just, I don't think she'll do that. Miss Sullivan, did you ever tell someone in 1984 that you had never had sex with Raymond Bucky? Yes. Who was it? My fiance. And to the investigators that interviewed me seven years ago. And why did you tell them that? Because I wanted to protect my reputation and my marriage. And in the last few weeks, did some people associated with Miss Rubin's office come and visit you at your home in Montana? Yes. Would you tell us what they did, please? They wanted to speak to me about my testimony. They questioned me in front of my children. My kids thought I was going to go to jail. What did they want? They wanted assurances that I would testify that I never had sex with Mr. Bucky. And did you and Raymond Bucky, in fact, have sexual relations? Yes. Thank you. That's all. Would you describe yourself as promiscuous? No, I really don't think so. Have you been enjoying the publicity you've been getting from this trial? No. I know my children are going to read about it in the paper. Did you have any difficulty having sex with Mr. Bucky? How do you mean, difficult? Was it necessary to orally copulate Mr. Bucky in order to have sex with him? No. Didn't you tell that to investigators? No, I did not. Are you sure? It's not the language I would have used. What language would you have used, Ms. Sullivan? I would have said, head. <laughs> This is Mr. Bucky's seventh day on the stand. Miss Rubin has gotten the allegedly most notorious child molester in history to reveal that he did not wear underwear, that he smoked marijuana, that he believed in pyramid power and was a virgin until 24. But there seems to be little connection to the case that claimed 400 child molestations and launched nationwide hysteria. Were these items found in your room, Mr. Bucky? Yes. You've been interested in pornography for a long time, haven't you? How old were you when you drew this picture? I was about 11. Don't you think this is rather sophisticated for a boy that age? I used to pick up Playboy magazines and copy from those. You drew pubic hair there, didn't you? I drew nipples there too, see? Let's talk about pyramids again. 
Are these your books? Yes. Do you think it's normal for a man your age to believe in pyramids? Well, I, I laugh about it now. You laugh about it now, but you weren't laughing about it then. No, I, I guess I wasn't. Do you see an item on this table called a radon? Yeah, but that's just what it's called. It has nothing to do with me. That's not what I asked you. Isn't it true that a radome is supposed to have 40 times the effectiveness of a regular pyramid? Objection, Your Honor. It calls for speculation as to the wattage of the radome. <laughs> are these delightful items yours, Mr. Bucky? No. Whose are they? They're my sister's. Who bought them for her? Her boyfriend's father, as a joke. Is this your doll collection? No. Whose is it? It's my mother's. She kept them for her nieces to play with. Now, what is this? It's a pyramid hat. A pyramid hat. Like this? It's, uh, it's backwards. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Bucky, is it possible that pyramid power drove you to molest children? No. Is it possible that pyramid power blanked out your mind so you forgot horrible events like molesting children? No. Is it possible you never molested children at all? Yes. Look the jury in the eye and answer this question. Did you ever molest a child? No. The jury came in. Were well, you just heard? No, I heard last night. And they're reading the verdict uh, at the opening of session this morning. They're hung on 13 counts, Ray. Was that good or bad? Your mother's charged with 13 counts. So if they're hung on her, it's not so good for you, is it? Could be just a coincidence. And it's not the end of everything. I can keep you out on bail, I think. We'll appeal. We have grounds for appeal, I think. I'm sorry, Ray. I never thought 12 people would believe this. I wasn't good enough. You did your best. And you did the best you could. I always knew this was the way it was going to go. I'll survive. You have reached 52 verdicts? We have, Your Honor. If we present those forms to the bailiff, the court will read the verdict. We'll read the verdict.
In the case of the people of the state of California versus Raymond Bucky and Peggy McMartin Bucky, we the jury in the above entitled action find the defendants Peggy McMartin Bucky and Raymond Charles Bucky not oh. guilty. Oh. Find the mood acts with children under the age of 14 in violation of Penal Code Section 288A, felony. Is this your verdict? Yes, Your Honor. So say one, so say you all. Yes, Your Honor. Does the prosecution wish to have the jury polled? I should like to thank the members of the jury for your participation in this most important case. Wondering what you must be thinking, how hard it was on you. I saw you wipe away a tear once in a while, but it didn't happen very often. <laughs> we read your mother's diaries. That school was your life. You love kids. Yeah. Uh, we could all see that. I'm, I, I, I'm not bitter. I was raised not to be bitter. <laughs> we. We lost everything. Oh. We don't have anything. Mama, we don't have anything. Oh. Do you think they'll try your client again on the hung 13 counts? If they put those children through this again, it will be the biggest molestation of all. I think everyone agrees that justice was done here at last. Today we're investigating the McMartin outrage. What went wrong? Does it spell the doom of child abuse cases? I, I could not do what justice this Justice system may have been served today, but justice was not. Wake up, America. This is your wake-up the shocking pain. There are some really upset and angry parents here. two remaining defendants. We have a network of parents all over America. These charges will be filed again. Slap in the face. Feelings are running very high in the courthouse. This doesn't diminish that those children have lived through or will have to face for the rest of their lives. And who hoodwinked our legal system. We have reached a decision to have a second trial on the McMartin case. We're glad you could come. We'd like to talk to you about something I think you'll be happy about. Where's Reuben? She's no longer on the case. She has to be reassigned to Santa Monica. Couldn't have anything to do with the New York Times calling some of her behavior sleazy and some of her remarks unprofessional. Let's get to the business at hand. We'd like to spare the county the expense of going through this thing again. Enough money has been spent, so he You looked at the tapes. You finally looked at the tapes, didn't you? <laughs> now, we haven't spoken to Reiner about this. We'd have to make a hard sell, you understand? That's bullshit, okay? We wouldn't all be sitting here if you hadn't already talked to Reiner. He's running for attorney general. All you need is to lose again, and you're looking for a way out. So, what's the deal? I'll tell you where I'm coming from. I would personally urge Reiner to accept a no-low plea. Hmm. Let me run it by my client. You don't have to plead guilty, okay? See, you can just say that you're taking the deal because it's too good to turn down. You take one count on each child, and that's it. No time. Doesn't that mean I'm saying I'm guilty? No, it means you're saying I'm taking the deal because it's too good to turn down. That's it. That's all. And you have to register with the police. Register as what? That you're a sex offender. Do you want to go up and take this crapshoot again? I'm sure as hell not going to let them win without going to trial. Trial? Oh, Joe, we can't go through another trial, Ray, and you know it. You speak for yourself. Don't even think about it. I'm tired, I'm exhausted, and I'm burned out. And you can't take any more. I remember you were going to put a shiv through your ear. You were going to hang yeah, yourself with yeah. your shoelaces okay. in your jail Okay, cell. So don't okay. say another so trial. Okay, so I thought about killing myself. Okay, but uh, never. Not once. Not in my worst time. Now listen to me, Danny. Not once did I ever think of giving them what you want me to give them now. No way. I'm not putting on a piece of paper that I'm a pedophile. Never. Ray, they say it ain't over till the fat lady sings. 
I think she's already sung. Thanks. Hey, how are you, Danny? Ray, how do you feel about going through another trial? Fine, he feels fine the about DA it. DA wants to make me a deal. He Ray. wants me to let them off the hook. I turned it down. Ray. Ray. Just a second. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. I made a deal with Martinez to keep this under wraps. It's too late. Hi. Mr. Martinez. Mr. Martinez. Did you try to cut a deal with Ray Bucky? Never. Not in a million years. We wouldn't offer Ray Bucky a deal in his wildest dreams. Thank you. Good day. Do it. He's lying his ass off. What? I said he's lying his ass off. Mr. Martinez is a liar. I had a meeting with him. I tape recorded the meeting. Perhaps you'd all like to hear it. I'll tell you where I'm coming from. I would personally urge Reiner to accept a no low plea. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. You were right. The fat lady had another song in her after all. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have been unable to come to a conclusion on any of these nine counts. We are irrevocably deadlocked and will never come to a conclusion. The McMartin case is finally over after seven years and $15 million and without a single conviction. It's odd, isn't it? Seven years and then in one minute, it's over. It's so strange. Well, it isn't over, not for me. It's something like this hits you. You don't start your life over again so easily. Not at my age. Not when most of it's gone. We don't mean to sound ungrateful, Danny. We are grateful. I know. But this thing is going to stay with us. But people have short memories. There's another astounding headline in the papers, another case on TV. People forget. Look, child. child molesters! What is your problem, huh? Want to say it to my face? Child molesters, you see? <laughs> they don't forget. And they don't care that they've ruined our lives. And not just ours, the parents, the children. How come God didn't stop it? Oh, no, don't blame God. What happened to us was all the work of people. God wasn't let into it. Who had the time to stop and listen to God? They were all too busy watching television.
Thank you.